In today's video, we are going to walk the shores of Lake Mead and see how much things have changed since our last visit in early September. I'm also going to give you an update on a special project that's been going on out here, and then share a pretty amazing experience with you. Let's get in the video. Now the last time we were out at Lake Mead, which was toward the end of the first week in September, the water levels measured at 1,066 feet, and we ended the month of October sitting at 1,065 feet. That's right, the water level has gone down by a solid foot. The water level started to slowly drop near the end of September, but picked up again in mid-October, only to start trending in a downward direction yet again toward the end of October. Now we'll come back to this in a minute and go over future predictions, but let's go see how much of a difference it's made at the lake. Really couldn't have asked for a better day to be out at Lake Mead. There's a lot of clouds in the sky, and I think the temperature right now is about 73, 74 degrees, which is something I don't say too often <laughs> when I'm out at Lake Mead because the majority of the time that I come out here, it was like triple digits and it was scorching freaking hot. One thing's for sure, it's definitely a lot greener out here compared to previous visits. And it's a lot taller too with all the vegetation. And this actually freaks me the heck out because there's been multiple times I've been walking along the shore and I hear something and I can't see it of course, but then it turns out to be a coyote. They've never bothered me, but it's still kind of freaky when you just see them pop out of nowhere. There's our first boat, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like they even got a buoy right next to it. Smart move. I'll get my uh, bigger lens on in just a moment so we can kind of zoom in. That old transmission literally has not moved since the first time I found it. Way back when. Still there. Now let's check out this boat. Now somewhere over there near Pyramid Island is another boat that we've been documenting as well too. And another YouTube channel known as Moho Adventures, they refer to the boat as Ophi. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. So we're gonna go find Ophi today. See what Ophi's up to. With the water levels going down by about one foot, it got me thinking, what can we expect in 2024 from Lake Mead? Well, this article from 8 News Now should shed a little bit of light on the subject. The lake is expected to briefly rise above 1,070 feet during January, February, and March, which is promising. But earlier in the article, it also states that new projections show Lake Mead dropping by about 9 feet between now and October of 2024. And keep in mind, we still have yet to see how winter and monsoon season of 2024 will treat us. Will we get another record-breaking year when it comes to snowpack? Only time will tell. And as I always say, the weather is about as predictable as my wife trying to decide on where she wants to eat. There she is, mateys. There's the boat. It's still underwater. Ooh, this looks really, really soft. We got to be careful here. I can even see footprints from where people tried to make it out to the boat. There it is. Mostly underwater. You got the back end just kind of creeping out a little bit here. We probably won't be able to take the best before and after photos because it's really, really muddy. There was one point in time where I was actually able to walk around the boat in the water, but the ground was so solid yet because it was so dry and I wasn't even sinking in that much. But I got a feeling if we go out there today, well, we probably wouldn't get that far. So before I came out here today, I was actually talking to one of my buddies that lives in southern Utah, and he was asking me why I still come out to Lake Mead, considering the water levels have come up significantly in the last year, and all the boats are now returning to the lake. He's like, you're not going to find anything, there's nothing new out there. Well, I beg to differ. You see, at face value, he's not wrong, but at the same time, people are always dropping stuff and losing stuff out there and on the shore, and with the wind and the waves and everything out here, it's always moving things around. So. You never know what's going to float up on the beach one of these days. And when something does, we'll be here to document it. Over the course of the next 45 minutes or so, I wandered around Pyramid Island to see if I would stumble upon anything new sticking out of the sand. But other than the usual trash that lazy, low-IQ, littering jerks leave behind, 
The only thing of significance I found was this rusty steel object sticking out of the sand, and I had no idea what it was. It didn't look like anything that I had ever seen before, but if I had to guess, I would say it was probably an anchor for the old harbor. And if you guys have any insight on what it was, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. All right, everyone, back at Boulder Bay. I don't know that there's much of a difference out here. There's water still here, which is a good thing. Buoys are still floating. I don't think it's connecting to the lake, especially with the water levels dropping. But we're going to explore the area, and then we're going to hike on the other side of that rock hill, if you will, and then take a before and after photo. Or I'll take an after photo, and I'll show you the before photos from when I was out here in the last couple months. One of the last times I was out here, I actually struck up a conversation with one of the park rangers, and he was telling me that he thinks come around December, January, that he thinks all of this is gonna be dry. And I was like, you think so? We've been getting a lot of water and it seems to be holding. It hasn't significantly dropped. And he goes, oh, you just wait. Come December, January, most of this is gonna be gone. So we're gonna to have to come back here around that time frame and see how true that is. You can see where the water level has receded so far. Drier up here, a little moist around here. We'll have to be careful because we don't want to go sinking in. But yeah, one foot might not seem like a lot, but depending on where you're at around the lake, that can drastically bring the water back. This is always one of the worst parts about making these videos, and I know a lot of you guys appreciate it because you voiced it in the comments, but I know you guys like the before and after photos, and the hardest part, I'm already running out of breath. The hardest part is hiking up to the same location, and some of these locations are not the easiest to get to. But we gotta do it. Gotta give the people what they want. If you ever wonder what exactly is on the bathtub ring at Lake Mead, well, let me show you. Now it kind of varies depending on what part of the lake you're on. But we are about halfway up the bathtub ring and there's really nothing. Just a bunch of sand, rock, boulders. There is a sign up there that says no trespassing. So we literally can't go past the line <laughs> up there. Now in this part of the video, we are going to do a special feature called Things That Piss Me Off. Let me explain. So about a month ago, a video came out on Fox 5 Las Vegas' YouTube channel called Lake Mead Officials Ask for Volunteers to Clear Out Trash and Abandon Boats. And if you ask me, this is one of the most ill-timed requests that Lake Mead officials could have asked for. It seems rather stupid to ask for volunteers to help dispose of the abandoned boats and pick up trash when most of the boats and trash is now back underwater due to the increase in water levels. And gee, I don't know, don't you think it would have made a little bit more sense to put out this request in July of 2022 when the water levels were at a record low, exposing more of the lake? It's like wiping before you take a dump. It makes no sense. And in fact, that's what I did. I made a video back in July of 2022 showing me picking up trash near Hemingway Harbor. I did that in hopes to inspire others to help pick up trash around Lake Mead. And every time I go out there, I still pick up trash. I just think it was really stupid that park officials would ask for volunteers and business owners to use their own resources to help get rid of the boats and trash, especially at a time when most of the abandoned boats are now back underwater. And if you're wondering why the park doesn't get their hands dirty and remove the boats themselves, well, let me direct you to an 8 News Now article published back in May of 2022. When asked if there are plans to remove boats, the NPS wrote, there are many sunken boats at Lake Mead, some of which are historic structures. As vessels continue to surface, park staff document their locations and assess for potential hazards or threats to environmental or human safety. But it is not standard park policy to remove a boat from the lake due to it being a labor-intensive, multifaceted, and costly process. 
Again, this absolutely makes no sense. NPS, National Park Service, is literally saying it's not their policy, and they are asking for people to use their own time, money, and resources because it's not the park's policy. It's like listening to one of those nut jobs trying to justify how the earth is flat. It makes no sense. All right, everyone, we just made it to Government Wash. Speedboat is somewhere down yonder. You can see a person fishing out there, too. Let's go check out the status of the speedboat. There really wasn't much of a noticeable difference out here, just like the previous locations, but I find it important that we still come out here every now and then to document the water levels. And until we get another huge downpour, go through another dry spell, or wait until late spring when all that snow melt makes its way down the Colorado River, I doubt we will see any major changes to the shorelines at Lake Mead anytime soon. But moving on, in the next segment of this video, we are going to make our way out to Echo Bay, and that is where I will show you the special project that I referenced in the beginning of the video. And by special project, I'm talking about Echo Bay Resort. Just over one month ago, this resort was fenced off because it was pending demolition. Long story short, this is what it looked like back in August. And this is what it looks like today. That's right folks, Echo Bay Resort has officially been torn down. One of my viewers told me that they started demolition out here, and I wish I would have come back a little sooner to capture a little bit of it on video, but you snooze you lose. I briefly struck up a conversation with a worker out here, and he told me that they started demolition toward the beginning of October. And as of today, this is all that remains. <laughs> One thing I often think about a lot, especially when it comes to abandoned buildings, and especially Echo Bay Resort, is as time goes on and, you know, people pass and 10, 20, 30 years down the road when people come out here, if there's still a lake and if Echo Bay still exists, there's going to be people that come out here and drive right on by the old resort location and they'll never know it even existed. This is originally where the video was supposed to end, but as I was leaving Lake Mead that day, I happened to spot something out of the corner of my eye. So I pulled over, turned my camera on, and this is what I saw. <laughs> 